Hi, this is Ms. Fitzmars, and this video is the solution to the multiple choice forces practice on page 40, sorry, 35 of your Unit 3 packet. So before you watch this video, make sure you spend 6 minutes or 1.5 minutes per question trying to solve these and then check back for the answer. All right, so let's look at number one. In number one, we have three blocks, mass three, mass two, and mass one, and they were all next to each other, okay? And there's a force being applied to mass one. Okay, the question is, what will be the force of M1 on M2? All right, so it's important to note that this whole system is at a constant velocity. And it's also important to remember that Newton's third law says that the force of M1 on M2 is the same as M2 on M1. Okay, so I'm going to actually draw a force body diagram of M1 so we have the applied force, F. We have, I'm going to say, F2. So that's the force from block 2 on block 1. And that actually should be the other way. Because it is resisting one pushing into it. I'm going to call that F2. I have some friction which has to be opposite the direction of movement, so I have FF, and then of course I have FG and FN. All right, so I know that FN equals FG because We have up minus down, so Fn minus Mg is equal to 0. Fn equals, and I'm going to say M1, G. And in the x direction, I have sigma Fx equals Max. Again, it says constant speed, so Ax is 0. And I have F2 which is what I'm looking for, plus FF minus F is equal to zero. Okay, I know that F2 is equal to, and I'm just solving for F2, F minus FF. I just rearranged this guy algebraically which is equal to F minus mu Fn, which is equal to F minus mu times M1G. Okay, so our correct answer is going to be option B. Okay, in number two, I have this pulley system, also known as an Atwood machine, and I have two blocks, A and B. I want to know about the tension in the rope, both for A and B. So first of all, since these are on the same rope, or we're talking about the same rope, TA equals TB. This eliminates a number of options. So we can only have either B, TA and TB are both 47, or D. So we know that this is knocking us down to two choices, B and D. To find the actual answer, we have to solve a force body diagram problem. Okay, so first I'm going to draw a combined force body diagram. Okay, I have FGB and FGA. In order to find the tension, I first have to find acceleration. So I'm going to draw a combined forced body diagram of my system. And I'm going to unwrap this pulley so that the string is straight. 
and so FGB is going to be pointing straight up. Okay, so right now I have FGB minus FGA, and you should know I'm using sigma FY equals MAY is equal to MA plus MB, so the mass of the whole system, times G. Okay, GB is M. B, G, so that's going to be 60 minus 40, okay, because this was M, G, this was also M, G, is equal to the two masses combined, which is 10, times, and this should say A, Y. Okay, we have 60 minus 40 is equal to 10 A, Y. I can solve for A, Y and I get 2 meters per second squared. Okay, now I have the acceleration to find the tension, which is an internal force. I need to draw the force body diagram of just one object. Okay, so I'll choose the 4 kilogram object. So this is my 4 kilogram object. I have T up, or FT up. and M G A down. Okay, so I have sigma F Y equals M A Y up minus down, so that's F T minus 40, which we found over here, is equal to, and now the mass is just my 4 kilograms, times a y which we know to be 2 because we found it down here. Okay, so I have f t minus 40 equals 8 f t not 80, 8 is equal to 48 newtons and of our options the closest is b 47 newtons Okay, they probably got 47 because they used 9.81 instead of 10. That's fine. All right, number three says, when the speed of a rear drive car is increasing on a horizontal road. So I've drawn a car. I've really just drawn the wheels. Here's the rest of my car. And we know that the speed is increasing. So let's say A is positive. We want to know the frictional force on each tire. Okay, so this is pretty weird to think about, but let's draw a force body diagram on each tire. So we have FG, FN, FG, FN. Okay, and then we have friction. The question is, which direction is friction? There's no other force acting. So we know that actually friction has to be in the same direction as the acceleration. Okay, this has to be true for both of our tires. And what's really happening is our tire pushes back on the road and the road, or backwards, and friction acts in the opposite direction. So friction pushes us forward on all tires and the correct option is C. Okay, finally, in number four, we have a block, and a force is pushing down on this block. And we want to know how, if the coefficient of friction between the plane and the block is mu, we have a certain angle, we have a certain coefficient of friction, what is the force F necessary to keep the block at rest? Okay, so I'm going to actually get rid of this and replace it with a force body diagram. Okay, so we have our hill. We have gravity going straight down. We have MG or FG. We have FN 
we have F pushing down. And we have friction holding the block up, FF. Okay, so in order for our block to stay still, FF has to be equal to MGX. Okay, so I'm going to write out both my X and my Y equations. Um, if this thing is standing still, then both sigma FX and sigma FY should be equal to zero. Okay, because both accelerations will be zero. Now in the F direction, X direction, we have FF minus MGX. Okay, and remember that the X direction is opposite, so it's minus mg sine theta equals zero. And we know that FF is mu times Fn minus mg sine theta equals zero. Now in the y direction, it's a little more complicated than we're used to. Okay, we have Fn minus mg cosine theta okay because that's FGY and then minus F is equal to zero so if we solve for FN we get FN is equal to MG cosine theta plus F now we can take this expression and we can plug it into FN over here so we get mu, and I'm writing it sort of down here, times mg cosine theta plus f minus mg sine theta equals zero. Okay, I just brought this down and I plugged in this expression for fn. Okay, don't forget that the mu will distribute and I want to get F by itself. Okay, so I have mu mg cosine theta minus mu F minus mg sine theta equals zero. If I solve for F, I should get F is equal to <coughs> mu mg cosine theta and you can do out the algebra to prove this to yourself minus mg sine theta all over mu okay now let's look at which options this best fits with and it looks like it fits best with option D. Okay, if you were to do out that algebra, you would find that they're actually the same algebraic expression.